Good Sunday morning, Monticello Christian Church family and friends. We're glad you joined us for the last church service, online service of the year. We are happy to be entering a new year while looking back on the year that we've had and celebrating all the things that God has done for us in this time and place. Let's begin this worship service with a word of prayer. God who walks with each one of us, help us to place our trust in your guiding care for us as we gather at the close of a year to celebrate that each ending marks a beginning. Prepare us to be witnesses of your love and forgiveness. Make us ready to work for you and your creation. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. lift up our prayers and petitions, not only for ourselves, but for those that we know. Let us pray. Lord, it's only a few days after the Christmas celebration, and we are exhausted. People have come and gone. Gatherings are winding down. We're being reminded of the normalcy of life returning to us. We don't want to go there just yet. We want to linger in the warmth of the season. Forgive us when we don't seem to feel your warmth in our lives all the time. Forgive us when we assign warmth only to Christmas and then to Easter and seem to dwell in the mundane and the rest of the time. We come to this place for worship in this time, and we say that we are in your presence, in God's house. And for this time, we feel a sense of the Spirit and of the presence of God. But then we go back to the rest of our lives, into the world, and we lose that feeling. May we be your dwelling place. May you make your home in each of our lives. The gathering time that we have and call to worship is, uh, that we have here is a time to be reminded of your abiding love and to celebrate with each other God's infinite presence and challenge us to be a part of your community. We offer to you, Lord, those who are on our hearts, those who are on our church prayer list, as well as ourselves, Lord, in these few moments of silence. <clears throat> Open our hearts this day, dear Lord, to understand your loving presence and to challenge us. Make us ready to serve you in this world. Give us courage to live as people of the light, those who find your comforting, encouraging presence in our lives at all times. Strengthen us for the joyful service in your name, for it's in your name that we pray this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
in 2 Corinthians 5.17, we are told that, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Every time we partake in communion, we are celebrating how, because of the sacrifice and the love of Christ, we are truly made new in the most important of ways. No longer bound to sin, now children of God, forgiven by Christ, with the incredible power of the Holy Spirit abiding in us and transforming us. It was on the night before his death, Christ gathered with his disciples to share a meal. And he first took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and he gave it to them. And said, This is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup and again gave thanks to God for it, gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood which is shed for you. And as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. As followers of Christ, each day is something like New Year's Day. Every day has that hope, that potential, that promise. And thanks be to God that we have been changed and we can change. And our best days are ahead. And our best days will never end. For Christ is our goal and our mission. We also had the opportunity this morning to present our gifts before the Lord. These gifts that we receive from the God's hand, they are proof of God's good provision for us. So let us also now return a portion of what we have been granted with gratitude and celebration. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name as we bring our offerings and gifts into his courts with praise and celebration. Amen. passage this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning at verse 25. <clears throat> at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Well, <clears throat> yesterday was Christmas, and so we have completed our, our series in Advent, looking at the unexpected ways that Christ engages our life and has engaged our life. And so we think, well, you know what, Christmas is now over. We went through 
uh, all of this Christmas season, and now Christmas is over. No, we've just been through Advent. Christmas truly begins now. Christ has come. Christ is coming again. And so Christmas, for a little bit, is now. Don't take your tree down just yet. If, you're, if someone in your, in your home is saying, hey, we've got to take the tree down, well, you have an excuse now. Rev Benji said, keep the tree up. Christmas starts now. You see, we are, we're drawing close to the end of a year, and so there's a lot of things on our minds. Maybe we want to kind of say, I've had enough of Christmas. And, and maybe what we've had enough of is something other than what Christmas really is. It's a question that we're going to be looking at today. We're, we're moving toward the end of this year, and the, the fact of the matter is, we, in the church calendar, we end with a beginning. The last thing that we have uh, here in, in our calendar year is, you know, Christmas, and we celebrate the, uh, the birth of Christ. The church calendar, on the other hand, it begins with the birth of Jesus. Advent begins a new year. And the church calendar is, is circular, just like our lives are a cycle. We move through Advent and Christmas and on to Epiphany and onward through the church calendar because it gives us opportunities and windows and space and time to look at the life of Christ and the life of us as believers and, and get these reminders over and over. Each year we have these reminders of what we are on this earth to be about. Now, I, uh, I saw again for the first time um, much like when in October for the first time I saw Charlie Brown and the Great Pumpkin or something like that, I saw for the first time, really watched the, uh, the, the Charlie Brown Christmas movie not too long ago. It came on TV, and so I got to watch it. First off, I don't know how I've missed these movies, especially the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. Because there's something deep and rich and theological in that. And as you might expect, Linus, much like in October, Linus here in December, the close of another year, Linus has a lesson for us. And I want to highlight that. I, I, I witnessed as I watched this delightful cartoon, Christmas could get some folks down. Of course, Charlie Brown, but many others kind of seem to be kind of bummed out about Christmas and the whole Christmas season, but not Linus. Linus thinks the whole season is wonderful. The snow, he calls the snow flakes. Oh, they're, they're ripe now. I, I, gotta, I gotta eat them now while they're good. And Charlie Brown, of course, is bummed he, because he recognizes the, the negativity, the commercialism, the favoritism, the busyness, the secular aspects of Christmas. He's even tasked to go get a tree, and, and he's looking at all these symbols of modernity, uh, there these aluminum trees, and he, he's like, is this, is this what I need to go and get, an aluminum tree? What, where are, do they still grow wooden Christmas trees? Linus goes with him. And, and it seems that Linus, throughout this whole show, he understands the spirit of Christmas. It, it's, it's not for this, this you know, impractical aluminum tree he, he, he knows there's there's more to this than just the negativity and the commercialism and there comes a point in time when charlie brown laments aloud this feeling that i think we all feel at some point what is christmas all about this can't be what it's all about and linus goes out on stage and gives this oratory this incredible speech, this telling of the gospel account of the angel's visitation to the shepherds. And he comes back and he goes, that's what Christmas is all about. Is Christmas over because the presents are unwrapped? Is Christmas over to you because we've given our gifts? Is Christmas over because we packed the, the leftovers away? Does that mean we could say, oh, it's over. I don't have to worry about this anymore. The fact is that Christmas has only just begun, and it's a, it's a fine way to end and begin a year. Christmas is an ideal mindset and an ideal spirit to be in. That Christ is with us. That here at the end, Christ is with us. Here at the beginning, Christ is with us. 
at all times in between, Christ is with us. Now, as I think about the beginning of this new year, I genuinely can't believe I've spent 21 full years this side of the year 2000. That to me, and if it's hitting you like it hit me when I first thought of it, it's something to really take a, a moment to consider. When I think about it, it makes me want to be like Charlie Brown. It makes me want to feel rather negative about all of this. But the truth is, let's not bring baggage into the new year, but cast our cares upon Jesus. And so now comes the interactive portion of this message. What I would like for us to do, I want you to take some time, and I want to invite you to find something to write on and something to write with. And hopefully, as I've encouraged you in the beginning, you haven't put your Christmas stuff away. That hopefully in your home somewhere, you have an activity scene. What I want you to do is I want you to write on that card or that napkin or whatever you've got. And I want you to write something that you need to lift up to God. It could be an area of brokenness. It could be uh, an illness. It could be a loss. It could be a job that you need. It could be some messiness in your life. It could mean a relationship that, that needs help or a situation that, that you feel like is out of control. And that you need to turn over to God. Our, our passage this morning says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy with many burdens, and I will give you rest. Christ says, I will give you rest. This is a time to give your burden over to God. Or perhaps right now, what you need is to offer up a celebration, a heartfelt rejoicing for a miracle or a thanksgiving or, or, or something going on in your family God's abundance in your life. We've all come to this place in time at the end of a year carrying different things. We each come with different needs. And so what I invite you to do is to offer up to God what you feel you need to lay at the feet of Jesus. I want you to find that activity scene and symbolically place that card, that thing that you've written down, and I want you to place it before that infant Jesus. And so as, as we depart, as, as we close this year, as we end this online service, may we do so in worship of the King. As we lay our burdens before the Christ child, turning over at the feet of the manger our, our brokenness or our celebrations, then we can go forth into this new year, into our daily lives, trusting that Christ is going to be with us. That he is our Emmanuel, God with us at the end and at the beginning. What Christmas reminds us of is that our God is not one that is distant from us. Just out there somewhere. God knows our name. He cares what we're doing. He wants to be in relationship with us. And he loves us so much that he came to be with us. Who was born like us, lived like us, died like us. And was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit that we too might have eternal life. That is what the Christ child we welcome into our lives here at the Christmas season. And yes, it is still Christmas. We welcome Christ into our life now. Here at the end of a year. And we welcome Christ into our life at the beginning of a new. This is what we are called to be doing in this time. This is why Christmas is not over. Christmas is only just begun. May we welcome Christ into our life, into our daily life, not just the part of our life that's framed here in church. And may we walk each step trusting that God is there for us as we lay our burdens before his feet. And let's enter this new year unburdened, but living in heavenly peace. Amen.
let us now enter into the new year with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.